Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'm going to be introducing the PyClone Asset Management System for Blender. PyClone is a Blender add-on that automates the process of creating parametric assets. It also includes functionality that allows developers to register asset libraries from their add-on. And since Blender doesn't currently expose drag and drop to the Python API, it is also a custom build of Blender 2.83. Now, the main reason to create this custom build is so developers and users can use this as a prototype to provide feedback. And hopefully, we can implement something similar to this in the 2.9 series as the official Blender Asset Management Engine. Now, as I've developed the asset library system, I'm also creating two libraries that are helping me test the use cases and show developers what is possible with the system. The first library is called Toybox, which allows users to maintain their own Blender assets. In the initial release, it will provide support for objects, collections, materials, and worlds. The second library is called Home Builder, which helps users with architectural and interior design. This is still in development, but I'm really excited about this one, and I'll be releasing more information about this library soon. In this video, I just want to talk about the core concepts on how libraries are registered, how they appear in the interface, and a quick overview of how they can work. So let's go and get right into it. All right, so when you download Blender 2.83 with PyClone, it'll have a very similar structure to a standard version of Blender. You can just launch the Blender EXE. Uh, but you'll notice that I've included a custom splash and a custom icon for the application. This just helps me keep the different versions of Blender that I'm running straight so I know what version I'm working with when I open it up. Now, apart from that, I've also included a custom workspace for PyClone. And so when you enable this, this is just the standard layout space with the file browser, which we're going to use as the asset manager. And so when we have that done, next we need to enable the different add-ons that we want. So let's go to Preferences here and click on Add-ons. And the first thing that we want to do is enable PyClone. So if we go to Asset Management, here we can just enable this. You'll notice that it gets rid of all of the other panels and information for the file browser. And this is just when the file browser is docked. And so here if we open up the file browser, you see it's going to look just like it normally would. It's just when it's docked that we want to make sure we only display the asset libraries. And so right now we have PyClone enabled. Let's go ahead and enable the add-on or the libraries that we want. So we'll click on the asset library. And so here this will come with two different libraries for an example. And for the most part, you'll be using the Toybox library. Home Builder is still very much in development. But you'll notice that when you enable these, it's going to show different libraries. And so an add-on can enable or register multiple libraries with Blender. So Toybox has object, collection, material, and world library. The Home Builder just has the Home Builder library. And so now that we have all the add-ons enabled, notice that when we click on these, it will activate those libraries. And I would really like this to work similar to how the tool system works, to where as you drag this out or collapse this, it will either display the name of the active library, or in this case, the active tool, or it'll just display the icon. That doesn't quite happen here, but what you can do is if you hold down Control and Shift on your mouse, then move up on your cursor, you can determine how big these icons are gonna be. And so I like to just create some nice large icons. That way I can just enable them here on the left-hand side. Now by default, the Toybox library won't have any assets because it's intended for you to maintain your own asset libraries. I'm sure that Blender will include some bundles and things like that that can be used as a starting point. But here, let's go ahead and just save some assets to the library so you can see how that works. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a category that we're going to save this asset to. So when we click on this here for right now, I'm just going to include a test category. We'll click OK. And so now I have that one category enabled. Now, if you want to, you can add as many categories as you need by just using this command right here. And if you want to save an asset to the active category, then you can use this top option. And so let's go and start out by just saving the active object. So in this case, it's going to be the active object that we have selected in the 3D viewport. 
So let's go ahead and click Save Active Object to Library. It's going to let us know that it's saving the object name cube, and we'll click OK. Now, this may take a little bit to do. What's happening is it's saving the asset to the active category that we have, and then also generating a preview. And right now, we don't really have a very quick way to do this. We have to do a full render. But you'll notice that when it's done, it'll just show up in this library. And here, we can just drag these assets in, and it's very easy to add those back into the environment. Now, one thing that's very important to understand here is that the information has to be saved to disk. And so by default, the file wasn't saved. But here, we have now saved it to a temp directory if it wasn't saved already. And so here, if I go ahead and add in a new asset here, so we just got our Suzanne. Let's say we want to save this to the library. It's very important that we save the file before we try to save it. If you see this asterisk here at the top header, that's letting you know that the file isn't saved. And so just do Control S or a file save. That'll save all that information to disk. So now with Suzanne selected, if we click Save Object to Library and click OK, it will be able to find that asset in this file and then correctly save that. So now we can add more Suzannes to our scene. So that's how objects work. Now for collections, this is going to be the active collection that we have selected in the outliner. And so here we'll just go and create a category again. And just to make sure we have everything saved, I'll just do Control S to save the file. And then here we'll save the collection to the library. And here we have the collection saved. So we can just drag this in. And it's going to have all of the objects that we had included in that collection. Next, materials are going to work in a similar way here. I'm going to create a category really quick. And here I'm going to go ahead and save the active material. So it's going to work on the active object and then the active material slot that we have. And so let's go ahead and just name this blue and then maybe change the base color a bit here. So now we have this blue material that we're going to save. Again, we're going to control S to save our file and then We'll save the material to the asset library. It lets us know we're going to save the material name blue. And so now we have our asset in the library and here. Let's go to material preview just so we can see this. So now when we drag this into the scene, we can just quickly assign it to any object that we want. Now it's important to know too that if your object has multiple material slots, so here we've got a few material slots included in this. And if we drag this and select the monkey, it's going to come up with a dialog that will allow us to determine what material slot we want to save this to. So you can just assign it to one material slot. Or if you click this Replace All button, it will replace all of the materials on not only this object, but all of the objects in the scene. So it just provides you a really quick way if you want to change out or swap out a material in your entire file. All right, and then the World Library. That's going to work on the active world that we have selected. And just for an example, let's go ahead and change this to an environment texture. And here it's going to open up one of the HDRs I have on my system. And here we'll go and set it to rendered mode so we can actually see the environment. And so now if we want to save this environment to our library here, again, we'll create a new library, Control S to save our file, and then save world to library, click OK. There we have our environment saved. So now when we drag this in, it's just going to assign this environment as the active environment for this scene. Since it's the same, it's going to look identical. But you'll notice here that we've included another world here that you can switch between. Now, like I said before, the Home Builder library is still very much in development. I mean, there's a few items in here that you can kind of play around with. Um, here's a couple different walls you can draw. Um, standard mesh wall, or if you're wanting to create a framed wall, you can do that as well. Um, there's some doors that you can assign to the mesh walls if needed. And then there's a couple different cabinets. Now I have a lot of really exciting plans for how these libraries are going to work. But again, I'll be releasing some more information on that soon. Overall, I think this is a good starting point, but it's not complete. There are several areas of Blender source code that I'm not very familiar with. So I'm hoping to work with the Blender developers to finish up the development so we can have this officially included in the 2.9 series. The first thing that needs to be developed is a new editor space called Asset Manager. I'm currently using the file browser, which works, but it would be much cleaner to have a space specifically for asset libraries. 
Next, we need a better way of loading the asset previews. Now with the file browser, I'm able to set a directory which will display assets available in that folder. But from a development standpoint, it would be nice to have a better way to determine what assets are displayed in this space. Now this goes along with the next point, a better way of navigating assets. So including a search, the ability to assign tags and filters. Right now, I'm just using a system to save assets to a category. And this may work for the first release, but there's a lot of improvement that can be done here. Next, we need a way to automate generating previews of assets. Now to generate a preview, I currently open up Blender as a separate process do a full render of the asset when you save an asset to the library. Now this works, but it's slow. And it would also be nice to have ways of saving multiple previews and just a little bit more control over how the thumbnail generation process works. And finally, we just need a better way of saving multiple assets to the library. I currently allow saving one asset at a time. So being able to dump a bunch of assets into the library would be very helpful. And these are just a few improvements, but I believe this will provide a good starting point that can be built on. Now, at this point, if you have any questions or comments, I've created a forum topic on the DevTalk website that we can use to discuss this further. I have a few other videos coming out very soon that will go into a bit more detail on the two example libraries that I'm working on. So feel free to subscribe to this channel for updates on that. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I'll see you in the next one.